Hey everybody, welcome to another video by myself, Samson Folk. It's my best friend, Oleg. We're going to watch some film on Pascal Siakam. The big thing is that through the first four games, I think Siakam's process was pretty similar. He was doing the live dribble, beat doubles, or beat guys in isolation in the screen and roll. Whatever happened, he was able to take advantage of those things. But his offensive process changed somewhat against the 76ers. And what he did was beat it. So on screen, you're going to see a guy who... Well, yeah, P.J. Tucker is the primary defender here. And Pascal is just hitting three-pointers over him. The 76ers were not anticipating this. They're going under screens. They're dropping very low. They're sinking not only on his on-ball actions, but off-ball. That first play, the ball swings to him. Nobody has any interest in guarding him. When he gets those screens and Maxi and Tucker go right under, he just pulls up. So, yeah, they're saying too much there. Like, they're not respecting the shot. But at the same time, it's pretty early in the year, so they're probably just gauging his... Oh, yeah. He's a good shooter. You know, I just, I still say it's a matter of time before he's like that really shows in the season, right? He is, his technique is great. He really works on it. He really hits a high percentage in, in his workouts and things. Easy as peasy. And then, even when we're looking at pack line defense, and for those of you who don't know what pack line defense is, that's basically when everybody's crowding the paint defensively. We have pack line defense and we have a zone. And all of this is to try and make sure that Pascal doesn't get to what he wants to do, which is tear apart every defense by initiating a mismatch, drawing a double, and finding guys. What do you think about that? Precious, off the bounce. Yeah, I like that he's just attacking. Oh, yeah, that's so good. Also, the fact that he's like able to slow it down as soon as he sees that like there's not much of a dis uh, advantage taken. He just okay, let's just pass it out. That was very good. Okay, so here is the pack line defense. We can we can stop right there. Basically, everybody except Montrez Harrell, who for some reason you know maybe this is a shout out to Precious's progression as a three point shooter. He's usually worse from the corner than above the break, but everybody has a foot in the paint on the paint. And this is what we saw for Pascal a lot last year. And this shot, the one he makes right here, is the outcome that Philly wants. Pascal hits this one, of course. But this is what they were expecting to force him into early in this game. But he ended up hitting four triples. And I, I got to ask you, is that how you would want to defend Pascal? You've seen some Raptors. We've watched some games together last year and this year. Mm -hmm. what, what, how would you want to guard Pascal? In the way that I've seen him play, like he does like to coming off the dribble and then does the spin move and then like that little step back he does. And that's like, I think that he's becoming very comfortable with that now. So I don't think I want to, I think I would just stick to him a little bit more. I mean, what else can I give him really? Because he's so tall. If he shoots now, he's so good at shooting. Like He can't really do anything else. So I guess like the only weapon you can have is like just dare him to shoot, right? So, yeah. yeah. Okay, so do you have the strength defensively if he's teeing off on you, though, with that jumper? Hits four threes in the first quarter, starts hitting against that. Yeah, exactly. Do you change up your approach at all? You have to. You'd have to at this point. You have to respect the shot. Like. Okay, so let's let's talk about <laughs> let's that, changed, that changed approach. So I believe it's right here, right? Okay, so what we're looking at is, okay, that's screen to roll. Fred just opts out of it, backs out. They have the matchup they want. Okay, there we go. Right here. This is what we've been seeing, basically. This is what we've been seeing, basically, the whole year. Mm -hmm. And look at that. The step back gets Embiid to step up. Mm -hmm. Why? We have no idea. He wants to add that extra pressure, I suppose. Mm -hmm. But that creates the release valve yeah, to yeah. Scotty in the dunker spot. Yeah, That's not the only time we're going to see this in this mm -hmm. video, either. So the big thing to notice with this stuff is that the 76ers aren't doubling from the top here yeah right sure. they doubled from the bottom and they brought pressure from the bottom and that was a bad idea mm -hmm. they didn't like that so what happens next gary Trent jr is up there he's gonna hover over pascal has the isolation he wants they double from the top gary had 27 points zero rebounds zero assists made a lot of shots doubled from the top there we go run a ghost screen with <laughs> with fred <laughs> Too easy, man. yeah yeah run a ghost screen with fred yeah. then the defense just has to step up it's that Actually, it's the actual stuff. So I got to ask you from the outside perspective, you have Pascal in this game. You go under. He makes the jumper mm -hmm. for like four of them, two of them pulling up. You bring help from the bottom. Mm -hmm. He picks out the guy on the baseline. Mm -hmm. You bring help from the top. Yeah, he the he, the he hits the guy on the top yeah. above the break. When you when you're trying to conceive of how you would guard this, 
How would you guard that? That's unguardable. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's kind of <laughs> like, that's the ethos of this video, right? Yeah. Is that Pascal Siakam, he's not going to hit four of, I think he went four of eight from downtown in this game after starting four of four, which is kind of funny, but it's the fact that he has so many things to go to. And we saw it against Miami, even when that three-pointer wasn't going, he's still able to work these guys, whether it's in a zone, whether it's in like a box in one where it's the one guy up top and everybody's closing in, whether it's pack line defense, right? These things are things he's found counters to. And I can, I'll show a clip right now of what he's been doing against the low men, against these tighter defenses here. The play against Brooklyn where Scotty got a dunk, and it's the play, the dunk that Scotty blew against Miami where Pascal, oh, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. Pascal yeah, draws the double, right? That double comes. Pascal picks up his dribble and heads out. And then the low man, he baits the low man to shoot to the corner, yeah. but then flips that pivot around and finds Scotty on the short side twice. And this is this is knowing how defense is going to respond. They think, OK, he's about to escape into space and sling it to the corner. And so he's using that to move the defense around the way he sees fit rather than kind of being like, oh, where, what's going to happen here? There's some premeditation there. That's an important part of every single score. But basically, we're dealing with a guy who has a bunch of things at his disposal, isn't afraid to go to any of them, and in this early season, continues to stretch his legs offensively. It's a, it's a really big deal. And so I have to ask you, you've been a fan of LeBron James for a very, very long time. You're, you're the LeBron fan. Pascal Siakam is going to be on what looks like you know a top-tier Eastern Conference team. He is threatening triple doubles every night, mm -hmm. even on a night where he only scored 20. He just had 13 assists. When you watch Pascal, he's not LeBron. Nobody's mm -hmm. LeBron, but a really big creator. What comes to mind when you see that? I like the I like the fact that he's able to like create these advantages and then capitalize on them and also being able to be aware of like the changes on defense and like using that against them, just like how LeBron likes to play. So it's like really great seeing that like, oh yeah, you know, like those uh, those takes where um, LeBron is had like a bad game, but no, he, no, he didn't actually. He was just like, had a bad shooting game. We can do everything else. Pascal can get to those things. And like now he doesn't need to score as much as he, he used to because he can create so much. That's that's probably the most important thing as well. You know, the sleepwalking to numbers thing, mm -hmm. because whether it's efficient, whether it's your best game or not, at the end of the day, you need certain numbers to, to hit the board yeah. to win games. Mm -hmm. And you go through bad stretches, you go through good stretches, whatever it happens. Pascal being able to he, he's hit 20 points every single game so far. Mm -hmm. Good shooting, bad shooting, hot shooting. Yeah mediocre shooting yeah. he's also been hitting an insane amount of assists it's just a guy who's dominating and no matter what he does go after it on the glass for offensive rebounds to supplement it if he wants to do it that way to work in two-man actions if he wants to create op opportunities for himself or others just kind of pop in as a second side creator to save possessions as a shooter against zones everything they threw at him double from the bottom double from the top Pack line defense, mm -hmm. zone, go under. Whatever. He beat every single thing. And that's as good as it gets, honestly. He's figured it out. He's he's putting things together. And now he's using it against them. Okay, so while we have you here, the Toronto Raptors, let's let's get some predictions just for a fun little end of the what's uh what 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 round of the playoffs are they going out in or are they winning? Um, I think that they're I think they're like losing like the game seven, in the second round, going to the semifinal, uh, going to the Eastern Conference Finals. Yeah. Heartbreak with blood or heartbreak? I think it's a heartbreak because I th I think that this defense is gonna make it a heartbreak. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's gonna make it close enough to be a heartbreak. Okay. Or they can make it. <laughs> <laughs> you know the shot. <laughs> wait, wait. Who would hit the shot though? Well, who, who else? The guy we're talking about? Of course. Okay. Yeah. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Just kind of walking through Pascal's, you know, his game. Uh, I'll have like a more comprehensive breakdown, like game by game. I think after 10 or 15 games of just how he's operating. But this is an MVP candidate right off the top. Agreed? Agreed. Hell yeah. Thanks for <laughs> tuning in. This is a leg, myself, Samson. Uh, we'll see you.